So this is the home screen. And you can swipe from panel to panel. You can rearrange widgets uh, by uh, dragging down on them. I also noticed that uh, the layout is a little more forgiving, like uh, in Android currently. Uh, if you put a widget too close to an app icon, there's like some spacing issues. But this seems to. Well, we've got a lot more. We've got a lot of more, a lot more positioning possibilities okay. basically here. So I think. We can look at like when you go to add something, or actually, you know, what might be better is let's go to apps and do this. So, uh, I guess you can't really see. Yeah, you can Ah, there. So you can see kind of that trailing, oh, okay. that trailing rectangle as I'm going around. That's the last place. So you can see we have lots of possible places. So the spacing to, is more precise and more like a right. desktop rather than the traditional four by four grid. Right. Okay. Exactly. So this is something. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so maybe eight by sixteen or maybe something like that. I don't know. This will bring up your five most recently opened apps. Uh, what, what is this button in the bottom corner? That's the back button. So oh, okay. So you notice that this device has no hardware buttons. Okay. Uh, besides the audio controls and the power button. Other than that, no hardware buttons. So we've got home, back, and basically the, the app switcher there. What if you're someone like who prefer? Is this? Uh, is there something that, say, a phone maker or a tablet maker could say, we want to have physical buttons and they can just access the program ring? Um, I don't see a reason that you couldn't wire up, you know, wire up hardware buttons to the same inputs. And uh, I noticed the browser looks a little more like Chrome than it does the standard Android browser. Uh, why is that? Uh, well, with the tablet form factor, we thought that we had room to put in things like tabs, for example. Okay. I think that's the primary difference, as you see there, you know. You see that, yeah, basically you see that we've got tabs, and that's really sort of the, the major the major difference, and we've got enough room to put in, you know, an address bar with some other some other actions there. So it's really about having enough space. On the mobile device, you have to strip it down to the, the bare essentials so that you have room, you have room left for content. Stream. And you can search, and you can just add, uh, this is the bookmark page, and you can just switch between them, lots of options, and you can also see history. I noticed earlier you had a, a tab that said most visited websites, is that this right here? Yeah. Uh, it, was, it looked so more like the, like uh, when you log into Chrome the, for the first time, you see the right. thumbnails so on that page. A new tab. Okay. Oh, okay. Then it has your most visit, visited pages. I don't suppose there's an incognito mode on this as well, is there? Oh, oh yeah, there is. Incognito, incognito tab. Oh, here, email messages. There is one, okay. Select them and drag them over. So I'll note that while it's you know it's taken some of the conventions from Chrome, the, the core rendering technology is still WebKit based. Okay. Yeah. And so we are we are using and you know have been using the V8 scripting engine for a while. Um, we put the we're starting to use the Chrome networking stack though for okay. the browser because it's more it's more efficient. And this is the reading app. Oh, it has a nice little transition to mimic real life page turning. And just so you know, this device does do uh, does do landscape. Oh, okay. I get that, and I'll get something similar. But we can just see. We folded the book over in half. I saw someone on Twitter say, I haven't seen anything in landscape mode. <laughs> and uh, when you go back, is there a way to like uh, change the settings? I remember uh, seeing something like that. Like, uh, so oh, so settings are probably there. So essentially, this thing in the, in the, up here in the action bar, okay. the, the four little lines, um, more or less replaces the menu field. Okay. So, but a lot of the functions that you would have found previously on menu, you'll find here along the top right of the action bar, which makes these, you know, makes these a lot more visible.
Then you can change the brightness settings and uh, the spacing and the height and all that directly from the app. Uh, is there a store within this, or you can go online to Google Books? Uh, you mean, is there anything free? Like if I want to get new books rather than the ones that come with, oh, shop. Uh, it brings you to Google Books, okay. Then you can browse all the new arrivals and charts and just pick out new books. And as you can see while you're reading books, the bottom bar. And where do you go to? Oh, apps. And then you can see what's new.